Welcome to the Rabbitohs Top 4 Podcast. Proudly presented by What If, official travel and pathways partner of the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Here are your hosts, Mark Ellison, Shannon Donato and Jeremy Monaghan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rabbitohs Top 4 podcast, powered by Audio Technica and proudly presented by What If. What If has you covered for accommodation, flights, car hire, and more. So if you're looking for a holiday, travelling for business, or you need to get to the game, visit whatif.com slash Rabbitohs. What If, it's Aussie for travel. My name's Jeremy Monaghan. I'm the media manager here at the Rabbitohs, and I'd like to welcome our co-host for the show, Mark Ellison and Shannon Donato. How are you, Ella? Yeah, good, Jess. It just seems like yesterday we were doing it, so it's gone pretty quick. It has having, been, having has a win makes a difference, doesn't it? Absolutely. How good was that performance out at Brookvale in terrible conditions last week? Yeah, it was good. It was a lot better than what the, the week before. It was a, a longer, a sustained period of ball control we had. That was the biggest thing. We got in a little bit of trouble in the second half where we made about three errors, but it was the only stage of the game that we looked in bad, I thought. So it was a good performance. Very good. And Shannon, how are you today? I'm very well. Thank you, Jez. And you're right, it was a great performance on the weekend. And uh, everybody kept talking about those terrible conditions. But um, up in the corporate box I was in, it was pretty dry up there, actually. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't too bad. <laughs> the air conditioning was a bit chilly. But besides that, it wasn't too bad at all. Very good. And you're fresh off a visit to the juniors at Kingsford Bistro for lunch. Best bistro in the business, Jez. And... I should know. I've had everything on the menu. <laughs> Today. <laughs> <laughs> We've started early. Yeah, yeah, we have started early. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't me, really Shannon. It wasn't me. Really. I told you. I'm pulling out of this side of it today, all right? <laughs> very good. Now, we've got a very, very special guest with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have to play some special music to introduce this man. Of course, 336 first grade games for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. A premiership winning captain, the King of Redfern, they used to call him, the Mayor of Maroubra. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Sutton. Thanks, Jeremy. That was great. Uh, very, uh, very good. I appreciate you having me on, lads. Very good, mate. That's, uh, as we explained before, this is more a bit of fun rather than chatting too much footy. But um, we'll get to know you a little bit better in our first uh, segment. But first of all, we have our regular uh, discussion on something that you may have learned this week. What was yours, Ella? I just think that um, there's still a little bit of a divide in the premiership between the top teams and the bottom teams. Um you know, we thought about it leading into the season. We saw a bit of it last year. A few clubs are struggling a little bit, which which always happens. But uh, that's what I've learned, that it, it's still there. Very good. Are we in the top tier? Yes. Excellent. That's all we need to know. That's all we need to know. You've got to look at the stain when you ask that from him. <laughs> what about you, Shannon? What did you learn this week? Uh, I learned, or I came to appreciate a bit more, um, just how uh, – beneficial Benji Marshall's experience is going to be that that steadying hand you know just when in clutch moments having guys you know we had Sato for years and Sam for years and Greg and those guys those years of experience you can't replicate and having somebody with Benji's uh, experience out on the field in some of those big clutch moments and often games just turn on a on a point here or there there's a there's a clutch moment 10 or 15 minutes to go and having somebody on like him on the field will be invaluable. Very good Sut what have you learned this week? What have I learnt this week? I've learnt that we still hate the Roosters. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. It's, um, obviously been there for 100 years, but um, yeah, really looking forward to this week. Um, I feel like Latrell's going to have a big one. He's, um, he's just growing every week, so it'll be good to see him and, and the boys rip in and get the, get the win. Yeah, Are he's we? looking pretty focused around training, isn't he, this week? It's good. Yeah, I feel like he's just going to grow, grow and grow. What, he's 24? Um, is he 24? Yeah, that's about 20. 23, 23 maybe. 23, actually. Yeah, yeah, 23. Yeah, yeah. And he's, yeah. Yeah, his best years are still in front of him. And obviously being around him at training and seeing the stuff he does at training and putting into the games, it's just um, it's good to see. And you know, I'm expecting big game from him this week. So yeah. talking about him growing and growing. I'm 46 and I'm still 
growing his own. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can relate. Twice his age, yeah. twice his size. Yes. <laughs> I'll take twice, thanks, Jim. 4XL to 5XL. Latrell's growing mentally, though, as well, Shadow. Yeah. Like <laughs> no, that's, that's a good point you make. Uh, we play the Roosters this week. I hope it's a bumper crowd out there. Yeah. I hope everyone gets out there to watch because it's, uh, as always, there's a lot of hype about the game and it's not often that the hype, that you know, we, it doesn't live after the hype that's created before mm. it. So I hope all our members and fans get out there to watch us because uh, we'll be going pretty well, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I've learnt three things this week. First of all, the resilience. Oh, you bag me about <laughs> yeah, I know. the four. I know. You've three things. <laughs> I've tripled it. The, fir- <laughs> the first one is the resilience of Australians at the moment. So a shout out to all those people affected by the floods and, and the weather at the moment. There's a lot of people doing it tough, but so Australians have been through these floods. They've been through COVID. They've been through bushfires. There's just so many people that have been affected by a whole heap of different things over the last few years, but Aussies just come together at at times of trouble and help each other through. So it's been great to see the support for the people that are affected by the floods um, at the moment. The second thing I've learnt this week is just how complimentary some of our listeners can be. Now, I've been checking out the reviews on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and Spotify this week, and, and this one came through. I'll just I'll hold it up for the camera if anyone's watching it on our website at the moment, but it was a five-star review, and it says on there, great banter, not enough Monaghan. The person who sent it was Monaghan lover and their comment was just more Monaghan and five stars. <laughs> so I'd like to thank my mum for taking the time to... Uh, oh, that's okay. We can leave there. Yes, <laughs> get plenty of you. <laughs> I'd like to thank mum there for uh, for submitting that. I, I actually think I know who uh, who put that in. A uh, shout out to Brock Schaefer for his time in, uh, in putting that review in. And the final thing is I've learnt that Mark Blockhead Lyons has a sensational sense of humour. So for those who listened to last... Uh, uh, week's podcast. Ello announced that he was the Australian jelly wrestling champion <laughs> for a, no- a number of uh, years. And then we were sent through for those watching on the website. We'll get it up uh, on the website. Is this photo that Block sent through of him holding about 12 packets of aeroplane jelly? <laughs> <laughs> so he's preparing for his next championship bout, I can, I can see there. So that was good. for the warm up, too, Jess. That wasn't for the bout. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So that was a bit of fun there with Block. But it's time to get on to our top four topics. And as we said, we've got the great John Sutton with us. It's the top four with John Sutton. The first thing I want to throw towards you, um, Sutto, the top four things that Rabbitohs listeners may not know about you. Um, yeah, just off the top of my head, I think um, no one really knows where I actually come from. Like mm. uh, everyone thinks it's Fiji, but my mum's actually from a little island called Rotuma, which is just off Fiji, and they've got their own language in that, so it's not actually Fijian. So. Um, it's only a small little island. Um, not much to do there, I think. But um, yeah. So. Have Have you ever been back there? Or? No, I haven't. No. Um, I really like to get back there one day. Yeah. Um, just live in the village for a bit. Yeah. And um, hopefully, get some surf around there. I was going to say oh, there might be some yeah. surf there. Yeah, there could be. Mm. I don't think no one's really sussed it out over there. So yeah. How long has Mum been in Australia for? Oh. Uh, Nearly 40 years. Okay. Yeah, 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 but she moved to Fiji because there's not much to do on the island and most of her family was there and um, <clears throat> that's when my dad went over and met her yeah, yeah, in a nightclub yeah. apparently. So, there you go. Yeah, and brought her back. Very good. Yeah, no moves. No moves. Learn his trade at Bunny's nightclub up here in the juniors and took it over, <laughs> took it overseas. Maybe that's a what... bit of Randy Wicks involved too. <laughs> <there again. laughs> Possibly, yeah. <laughs> what else you got, Sut? What are some other things that people may not know about um, you? Well, everyone knows I surf, but I think I'm probably number one surfer in Maruba at the moment. Yeah. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I like to think so. Yeah. Um, Who are we throwing the challenge yeah. out to here? Uh, I'll challenge anyone in that NRL who wants to have a surf yeah. 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 Um Pretty confident in my surfing ability at the moment. I surf yeah. pretty much every day after training. So I feel like I'm going all right. Chaps, chaps from Rabbitohs <laughs> Radio might have something to say about it. He's, yeah, well, uh, he can back me up. Yeah, oh, right. see, yeah. He no, might challenge you. I'm <laughs> going to jump in there. That everyone says your ability in the surf is outstanding. So, you know, it's. Uh, You've been doing it for a long time now, haven't you? Yeah, I've been surfing since I was 12. Yeah. So, a lot of hours in the water. Very and you're good. obviously enjoying it now? Yeah. Break away. Did it take a bit of time to transition from the football into the 
life without the footy? Yeah, I still feel like I'm still transitioning. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, especially on game day, I miss miss you know being around that locker room feel yeah. and getting amongst it. And yeah, I do miss playing, but I definitely don't miss the training. No, <laughs> definitely don't miss the training. Watching the boys flog each other every day. But there'd be blokes playing till they were fifty or sixty if they didn't have to train. <laughs> Joey Johns would still be playing if he didn't have yeah, to train. Yeah, Freddie, yeah, all those yeah. blokes, I reckon. Yeah, another one. Um, I might actually have a run playing footy this year. Yeah? Yeah, so I've been getting itchy feet. You know, obviously, been around footy training and the games. I've, I throw it out there. I might be playing a couple of games for South Eastern. Oh, oh, nice. Very nice. good. Yeah. So, Just double the crowds down at Pioneer Road. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Kenzo doesn't have a team anymore. Yeah. Um, some good mates play down there. Um, Damon Ali Tovia, who played a few games. Is he soon. still playing? Yeah, he's Damon, still playing, he? yeah. No, so... Gonna have a run around with them and um, yeah, see how we go. Very good. good. Yeah. Hey, Sato, I, I asked Ella this question a couple of weeks ago. I think it was on our first episode. But just ex-players, um, just about everyone I speak to, and I, I wonder if it's the same with you. After you stop playing, you still have re- semi-regularly have dreams that you're still playing football. Do you do you dream? Do you dream that you're still having playing? Um, I don't really dream about, but I think about it all the time. I do. Yeah, I always think about you know playing and you know, obviously I want to play for South, but that's you know, the question. But um, yeah, I think about it a lot. Um, obviously, just being a training, I still feel like I can do most of the skill stuff, but obviously the fitness and the, the strength levels ain't there anymore. And um, obviously, I'm getting pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really have much speed, and I've definitely got no speed at the moment. So. I've got to say, um, you say it's out of the question, but on Saturday when we had one player on the bench, you're getting very close to making a comeback, mate. Don't worry about that. I was ready. It was either you or me, mate. No, no. <laughs> you were going first. <laughs> so what position are you going to play, sir? I'm not sure yet. I haven't been down to training. Yeah. Um, the, word, the word spreads fast around here. I mentioned to um, Kyle Howes, who runs South Eastern, that yep. you know, we had a chat and said, look, I'm up. Be keen to play a few games, and he's just every person I spoke to since that day. Is, Are you playing for South East? And you playing? I was like, oh, yeah, I might have a couple of games. <laughs> just a, is there a salary cap involved in the juniors <laughs> football? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> hey, Jez, you ask what position he's playing. I reckon if you ask his coach what position Saturday he playing, he'd say whatever he wants. Yeah, whatever he likes. <laughs> Does he want to be coach? <laughs> well, yeah, I definitely want to play in the halves and defend on the wing. Yeah, you're going to say, play fullback. Yeah, yeah. I might even, yeah. You've been watching me play. I've like made a career doing that. Well, I seen you, was it on Instagram last week, giving it to someone? Oh, Michael that was Erickson. Good. Was it? Michael Erickson, the big oh, crossbody. I, I didn't see it. I, I don't know. There, there weren't many people I gave it to. I'll be happy to see it. So it was good, it was good 80, 80 the kilos up. lighter, I mean. <laughs> yeah. was, was it a tackle or a stink? It was a stink. Oh, it was Glenn uh, Ryan. Was him? Was, uh, it was the great Glenn Ryan. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. tipping for Manly. <laughs> Hello, won a fight. I thought it must have been in the under sixes <laughs> last yeah. year. <laughs> I saw a good line actually from uh, from James Hooper. He was talking about catching up with Joey Leilua because they'd had a, had a bit of a stink over a few things. And and James said, I still reckon I would have won that fight by at least a hundred meters. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was a good line. Shannon, I said at the start here that I wasn't going to pull any fat jokes out against you, but I am now. Okay. It's back on. All there right? can't be any left, surely. <laughs> surely there's none left. Oh, very good. So let's look back at your, your footy days. Um, talking about the juniors and the juniors competitions, was it right you won 10 straight competitions in the juniors with Kenzo? Yes. Oh, so man. I played a couple of years for LARPA uh, under sixes, and then we folded and I ended up, I want to play for Kensington. Mm. Um, yeah, from under sevens to sixteens, we won the comp. So um, we had a pretty good team over those years. Few undefeated seasons. Mm. Um, to be honest, I was a, bit, a little bit of a sook when I played footy. I um, I hated losing, mm. and um, you would have seen me crying a lot on the field <laughs> just because I hated when the team scored a try against us and that. So I don't know what was going on there, but I was a bit of a sookie player coming through the grades. <laughs> were, there, were there any other players that kicked on from that side, Sutter, that we might know? Um, well, Damon, Damon yep. Alichave, he was probably Great one player. of the best junior players, you know, that was around. He, he, he did. Up. He, he had um, plenty of ability. He had heaps of ability. He had a very good right-hand fend. Um, 
And right cross, too. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think down in Canberra, someone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Dave Faulkner, wasn't it, from the <laughs> Screaming Jets? I think the Gleason, is it? Oh, Dave Gleason. That's yeah. right, Gleason, yeah. He felt the power of the right, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, other than that, uh, I played with uh, Lead Matua, a very good mate of mine. He's um, you know, older brother of Randy kicked on, but in the juniors, he was a really good player. Um, you know, them two were probably, well, they were better than me coming through the grades. Mm. Um, just obviously, obviously just didn't kick on and feel like I got lucky. Mm. I remember we had some old footage that uh, your mum gave us, I think it was in the lead up to your 300th game of you playing for Kenzo at Redfin Oval and you had the headgear on, the Steve Menzies style headgear while you are playing out there and you were just directing play. It was just typical Sutton magic out there, just putting guys like Luke Roberts through holes yeah. and, and Damon just terrorising people. It was uh, it was good to yeah, see. I had um, bad knees coming through that Oscar Slattis or something oh, when yeah, you yeah, grow. Yeah. yeah, so I could hardly run when I, was, when I was 15, 16, so I did a lot oh. of standing and passing the ball. Mm. Yeah. You're about a foot tall than everyone, except for Luke <laughs> Roberts and Damon Ali Tovia. Yeah. They're as tall as you. Yeah, Robbo was a really good player too, come yeah. through the grades. I I just used to get the ball and feed him on, on the edge there and he used to score plenty of tries. Yeah. yeah. yeah what, no. what, what about the junior rep size, like the mats and the ball? How how did those sides go when you were a kid? Sort of? um, mats, we weren't too good. SG ball, I don't think we were too good yeah. either. Flag. Flag, were, yeah, yeah, we. I watch. I think two thousand and three, you were playing flag. Yeah, it was just before I got back in involved with the club, and I, I used to have a, a young kid in the team, Trent Baldison, that used to used to play in the team, and that's when I got involved coming to watch you guys. And you had a lot of talent, but you just didn't seem to want to put it all together, and people weren't all that. We need yeah, a super coach. Hey? We need a super coach. <laughs> That's what I was leading to. So. <laughs> I've already heard this story earlier this morning. <laughs> no, but, no, no. You, there was there was a lot of ability in the team, but you you didn't seem to you didn't seem to worry too much if you got beat. Though, yeah, you know, was, is that a fair call? Yeah, for sure. We just needed someone to guide us, and um, that man was Ello. <laughs> Ello came along. Yeah. He left the wardrobes behind. Oh, I did. He plays yeah, well, the Wang. Remember yeah, the Wang? Yeah, the, I do. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> 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 Jesus, 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 where's, Jesus, where's the Wang? Where's the Wang? Tell us about the Wang. Actually, <laughs> we got a whiteboard here. I'll just set it up <laughs> for <laughs> <a run. laughs> Very good. And then, and then obviously went on to a, a long first grade cricket. Can you tell us about your debut and what it was like leading up to that game? Yeah, it was um, 2004. I went from Flag, yeah, that's right, First yeah. Division. In the first grade, um, at round 17 it was, up in Brisbane. So, yeah, I made my way through the grades pretty quickly. Um, I don't remember much from the game. It was just that uh, they give it to us. It was like 40-odd. I remember that. Talis, Sivan Siva, I think Lockyer might have played. They were really good side. Um, but I, I managed to score a try with not long to go in the game, so I was pretty, pretty happy about that. Post try celebration, didn't yeah, for all the bra boys, yeah. uh, <laughs> all the boys, yeah. <laughs> they ride it down to Maroubra that afternoon <laughs> in celebration. <laughs> and what about you? Hold quite a few records at the club. The last premiership winning captain, the most games for the club. What do those mean to you now that you finish playing? Yeah, it obviously means a lot. Um, when you're playing, you don't really think about that stuff. Obviously, you do a little bit, but um, to play 336 is um, you know, a massive achievement for myself. Um, I think Adam's coming up to nearly second most games in the club, I think. He's on yeah, 2 he's, Yeah, yeah he's, he's two away. Mm. Um, But I don't think he's going to pass me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe Campbell Graham or Cam Murray, they could be a chance. Mm. But um, the way they throw their bodies around, I don't think they'll pass me. <laughs> <laughs> I just often, like, 336 games. Yeah, the toughest part about it, apart from the training in the off-season, you know that last 40 minutes before you go on the field, you're just trying to fill in time and that. Does, is, you know, you, do you remember doing that? I mean, you've obviously done it 336 times, but, <laughs> you know, it gets monotonous though, doesn't it? It does a little bit, but um, in my head I've always been a – always analysed the game and I've always thought about 
the game a lot before games, yeah. during games, after yeah. games. Yeah, so yeah. Even watching games these days is a bit frustrating because always analysing and critiquing what the game a yeah. lot. Mm. So yeah. um, it's a good thing sometimes and a bad thing as well. But that's that's because you're involved in the coaching now too, isn't yeah. it? You enjoy, I, you know. Yeah. I, like all my career, I've sort of tried to analyse yeah. the game a lot and see what's the best ways of doing things. And um, Johnny Lang used to call me the, the schemer. Yeah, so yeah. Scheming around <laughs> and trying to find different ways to um, do drills at training and come up with the best plans and stuff. So, so well, that had nothing to do with your footy. Why he called you that? <laughs> <laughs> he called let's you the schemer. He called Shannon the steamer. <laughs> <laughs> come on, let's keep it real, Sato. <laughs> now I've got to say about Sato and he, the way he thinks about the game. I, I told the story previously when he was out injured. Did his pick against the Roosters in round one? Um, a few years back, and I had the pleasure of his company up in Cairns and over to Perth. And the way he just broke down a game, like, you know, I, I don't profess to be a good footballer. I never was. But he just opened up my eyes about the way some people think about football. And I just never thought about it on that level. And he is. He's just an absolute student of the game. And um, the great thing is he gave the boys the benefit of that experience whilst he was playing. And now he's you know, he's giving that as a coach. And um, I dare say um, that's – that. that as a scholar, football is definitely your strength. Yeah, cheers, Shan. Um, I remember that trip. We um, he didn't really talk because he was smashing the Chinese food up. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there pretty much talking to myself. How good! I don't even have to get involved. Get this is shit. Right. Oh, you fit right in. Three out it. Oh my lord! You fit right in here, son. Jeez. You're welcome back next week. Can we now, have mate. a segment on fat shaming and the, and the psychological uh, abuse it causes? No. <laughs> uh, mixed no, on driver six is how we do it. I said this out of that time. I remember that Just meal. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. <laughs> I said you would have liked this if I if I gave you some. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, now, away from footy, mate, you mentioned your, your mum and dad earlier. Your mum, Eleanor, she's got to be one of the most passionate football supporters I've ever met in my life. What's it like having the support of her on the on the sidelines as a player and now as a coach? Do you still hear her in the, in the stands? Yeah, not as much in the NRL because, you know, they're sort of so far away in the, that home bush and stuff. Mm. But growing up, oh, she was always <laughs> screaming out stuff. And, you know, if I wasn't playing good and – <laughs> She'll be ripping in me in, but it was probably this one time at uh, Kenzo over under 16s. Um, had a bit of a night the night before. As a young <laughs> <laughs> under 16s. Can <laughs> <laughs> we talk about she that? Was at you. She <laughs> was screaming at you get out of the park too before the game. I think statute of limitations has you safe. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gone out the first half, played a, played a bit. Started the second half, I was standing there, and I just went, nah. Started walking off the field, got back to the bench, started spewing everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> my mum's standing behind me going, ah, that's what happens, <laughs> laughing her head off in front of everyone. I was just like, no. <laughs> And I'm missing the last 20 of the game. Oh. I was lying in the car. <laughs> I remember when you first came into first grade and she used to drop you off at training because you didn't have a license. Yeah, well, I didn't get didn't my license until, um, yeah. She wanted to make sure he'd go. That's yeah. what it was. <laughs> Uh, and you're a family with other professional athletes. Your, your sister was a professional netballer. Yeah, she um, played for the Swifts and the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Mm. Um, yeah, she was a really good netballer. Um, obviously, when she lived in Adelaide, played for Thunderbirds, she met her partner, and she's been down there ever since, mm. running um, a few F45 gyms. Mm. Um, she just went back to uni as well to study psychology, and she's got two kids as well. So she's, Wow. Yeah. And she, I think she wants to run a half marathon as well. So she's been running every single day. Wow. She's looking you know, fit. Yeah. Yeah, she's very busy and she's helping me with my um, academy. So yeah. those academy coming up April 8th. So, um, yeah, it's exciting to do a little bit with the kids and, and um, help out as much as I can and you know, te- hopefully teach some kids about um, some stuff I've learned over the years and yep. hopefully push them in the right path. How how can people get involved with your academy coming up? Yeah, so on the Instagram page, Sato's Academy, um, you can register if you want to come along and um, you just go through there. And my sister's running all the Instagram page and all the socials, so 
yeah, if anyone's keen out there, bring them along. Mascot Oval, 8th of April. Very good. And, and talking about kids, you're obviously a dad now with two little ones, Pippi and Ace. How are they uh, going with their sporting endeavours? And how's mum Stacey handling having you at home more, more often on weekends now? Yeah, she... Um, <laughs> That's she why you're surfing so much. <laughs> she, she bought him three surfboards. Yeah. <laughs> well, she actually... Um, she's not too keen on me surfing every day because I'll get home in the afternoons or something from surfing or training. And um, the kids just start run, going mad, and I'm like, I'm going surfing again, <laughs> running out the door. <laughs> so, no, nah, she's been very supportive of me, I've supported of me of my whole career, and um, she's always been by my side, and she's been a good girl for me, and I'm very proud to have her as my wife. Um, with the kids, um, yeah, Ace is playing footy this year. He's playing for South East and under sixes, and um, he plays Oztag. I do a bit of coaching with them, um, but he's just a little – Little boy, he's, um, he likes to fight more than play Oztag on the field. <laughs> uh, like, I'll be like coaching him going, Ace, what are you doing? Like, you want to play Oztag or are you going to fight? And he's like, I want to fight. <laughs> he's been I'm hanging like, out oh. with Uncle Damon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he's just a kid, you know, having a good time. And, and Pippi, she's just, um, she's doing dancing, a lot of dancing at the moment. And uh, hopefully, the model, she's been modeling a little bit. That might hopefully take off, so maybe travel around the world with a yeah, manager. Yeah. <laughs> do, they, do they both get into the surfing with you? Uh, in summer they do. Yeah. Yeah, but they get over it so quickly. They get a couple of waves and stand up and then they just, oh, I'm over this. And I'm like, oh. yeah, but, um, you know, I didn't start surfing at 12, so I'll give him that. I'll give him a little bit of leeway there. Very good. And then uh, something I wanted to mention, you were very media shy while you were a player. I've never seen a player run away from me so fast whenever they saw me <laughs> down at the sheds and I was looking for guys <laughs> to do interviews. But you and Ello have formed a great partnership on the, the Rabbitohs Insider. Do you enjoy analysing the game on camera and talking people through what you see on, on the game? Yeah, definitely. I think um, at the start I was a little bit nervous doing it, but Ello's made me very comfortable in doing it and um, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Um, you know, dissecting some parts of the game, and I'm enjoying this actually. <laughs> well, we t- we touched on it before about you know what you know and 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 all about it, and it's the people want to hear from you, and that's that's what we try and do get you to talk about, and you're doing a great job at it, mate. And it's it's like everything when you first start it, it takes a little bit of time to get used to it, and you, you're doing a great job there, though, mate. Now, as I said, he knows everything there is to know about football, so he's got a lot to. Oh, I just want to one point, Jez mentioned that. You know how you used to be media shy and you never seen somebody run away from him so quickly. I thought he'd be used to it, the effect he had on all the girls. They all <laughs> <laughs> you walk in a room, they just kind of, kind of like cockroaches. Uh, <laughs> I never bothered chasing. <laughs> <laughs> and just off the top of your head, start to, to sort of wind this stuff up, what are the, the top four moments from your time with the Rabbitohs? Um, obviously, make my debut. Um, you know, I don't. I, I see that game pop up every now and then, and just seeing how skinny I was, and um, yeah, you had I'm, some hair on you too. Yeah, and I had some, <laughs> yeah, some hair. But um, yeah, that was definitely, you know, a good moment in my life, uh, my footy career. Um, obviously the grand final. I think um, you know, it took me ten years to make one. So um, and I think about. Probably think about that whole two weeks, the week leading up and the week after, which was <laughs> it was a great two weeks of my life. Um, Mine too, mate. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know, Ella? You can't remember. No, I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a moment from the game. Uh, from after the game was being able to, you know, line the confetti with my daughter. Yeah. You know that was um, awesome. I, I I had dreams about that. Yeah. I had dreams about that moment, and uh, to do it was um, awesome. I yeah. I got a photo hanged up on the wall at home, so you yeah, have a good look at that every time. Um, probably playing 300 games for the club. Um, you know, obviously no one's done that, so that was a big achievement for myself. And um, yeah, that's what I come up with at the moment. Yeah, I think, that's, oh, that's full. Maybe, that maybe the one. yeah, the mural, the mural. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, awesome. You know, to yeah. have it up where my you know, I used to play most of my footy. Um, yeah, I wasn't old enough expected anything like that. Yeah. It was an emotional day, that. You, you yeah, showed yeah, plenty of emotion that day and it was good to see in the lead-up 
to that game. Unfortunately, we didn't get the right result on the weekend, but um, it was great to, for, for me personally to be involved in the build-up to that too, and I, everyone was just so invested in it and making sure that it was celebrated in the right way, and that mural's fantastic. And as far as I haven't been down there recently, but I assume you still haven't been defaced down there at, no, <laughs> at Kensington the, Oval. It yeah, shows the respect people have. Like <laughs> we should get a mural on the other side of you at the under 16s game on the sideline. The um, the blokes that look after it, they said, "Don't worry, we're going to make sure that no one can um, ride over it and stuff." Yeah. So. I've drove past it a couple of times. It looks pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, f- funny story from that week. So we'd all tried so hard not to tell Sud about the mural. We'd all just say that it was a surprise, as close as we could to the day. And um, poor old Campbell Graham, new into the squad, lives right near Kensington Oval and on the team <laughs> WhatsApp about five days before the unveiling comes a photo of half of Sutto's face. On the side of the How good is this? And I'm like, no. The boys are ripping into him too, and he was like, oh, he was shattered. Uh, I'm so sorry. He's right, not there trying to delete things. It was very funny. He was. Very I, I just funny. got to give a shout out to Jez, actually. There was a big team effort in pulling it all together that week. Was, Jez did absolutely everything. He emceed the event, but it was actually Jez's idea for the mural as well. And he said, oh, a mural somewhere. And I, I remember I went and scouted sites all around and he said, oh, what about Kenzo Oval? I had a look at inside of Maroubra Surf Club because I knew there'd be no problem with Ramwick Council and I was thinking of all sites. But basically, Jez, it was Jez's idea and he helped bring it to life and was right there when we when we did it. So um, well done, Jez. Great idea and a great legacy yeah, for, thanks, Jeremy. for the That's club awesome. and Sutter. <laughs> yeah, I, wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind one down the beach somewhere as well. <laughs> we thought about that. Right? <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Make it snappy, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon's is going to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> you, you run this podcast machine and I'll go and, I'll go and get it done. I'll grab me paint can. Now, just well, going back, we didn't get the result that week, but I think it was a great thing from the club, and you obviously had a big part in it, of just celebrating the career of our greatest ever player that, that played the most number of games. And, you know, it's something we're really good at now. And, uh, you know, everyone that plays with a rabbit has a rabbit for life, and... Um, obviously, this bloke, he's, he's, he's a rabbit out forever, obviously. But uh, it was a great thing from the club. We didn't, as I said, didn't win that week, but we won over time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. One one thing I wanted to mention before about uh, things that people may not know about you, you're a massive Tom Brady fan. Now, I thought you were a massive New England Patriots fan, but you defected as soon as he I'm did. I'm following Tom wherever he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, head of recruitment. <laughs> <laughs> can we get him in the cap? He could probably do it. He could probably do it over here too, the way he plays. So he, loves Tom Brady. I, I was a bigger fan of Marsha Brady, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> For all those people listening under 40, you need to Google the Brady Bunch. <laughs> That's joke of the week. Yeah. Today, that one. <laughs> I crack myself up. <laughs> oh, very good. Well, as we said before, Sut's great to have you uh, in here. Thanks for having a laugh with us. And we'll ask you to stick around for our remaining uh, top four topics that we've got coming on. But it's great to have Sutto in here and have a chat about his career and some things that people may not, not know about him. Yeah, that was excellent. Well done, mate. Thanks for coming Thanks. in. You're very Thank good, Sutto. Very good. Righto, we'll be back in just a moment. Now, the official Rabbitohs merchandise store, it's now located at the Heffron Park Tennis Centre on Bunurong Road in Maroubra. And if you're looking for a Rabbitohs jersey, a polo shirt, T-shirt, the new hoodies are all in stock now. You can grab hats, flags, anything that you like. Make sure you head down to Heffron Park and see the team down there in our merchandise store in the Tennis Centre. Alternatively, you can also jump online at shop.rabbitohs.com.au. And with our first home game this weekend, Shannon, we're going to be uh, have the stores open out at Stadium Australia as well so everyone can grab their gear on game day. Absolutely and those brand new hoodies that you spoke about Jez they're very popular as are these black polos that you uh, Elo and I are wearing and well done Sato and representing the Rabbitohs gear yourself. (laughs) (laughs) What I'd like to say I'm actually doing some work with G'd up clothing. (laughs) So I just want to give him a plug. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> How good is he? Today? <laughs> I know. Gosh, well, amazing. yeah, we're doing, I'm doing some work with them, and um, we're doing some. They supply, you know, to businesses, um, you know, polos, hoodies, um, you know, hats, all that sort of stuff. So, 
when the next uh, contract's up at South with Classic, uh, you'll be looking to get in there. <laughs> well, you'll be taking over from Alan Jones. <laughs> 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 more, more Shandonato is getting more commercial. Apologies. You thought it was a plug for Al? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I've walked in the wrong studio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jeremy, there'll be lots of gear out at the stadium on Friday night. We've got the new rain jackets in as well. We'll be promoting those, obviously, with the... There's a lot of rain we've had recently. It's got the rain jackets, the new parlos, the new the new hoodies. So I encourage everybody to have a look at the merch outlets. Very good. Shop.rabbitos.com.au <laughs> Now, our next top four topic is the most influential people on your playing career or your life. And last week, Ello, we had Shannon go first and steal all our thunder with <laughs> Mike Cleary. So I thought we'd come to you first this week. Thanks, Jez. Well, the the number one for me has just been my family. Um, you know, obviously, it's grown, it's grown over the years and I've been – I was a player, but, you know, in, in coaching and administration, the club has gone over a long period of time, but – my parents have supported me since I wanted to play football when I was six years old. I went to every game. A bit like Sato's parents, they go and watch you all the time. And, and, and as a kid, no matter what it is, if you, whatever you're doing, if your parents are there, it's a great feeling for you. You know, you know that you've got their support and that. And um, it was actually Dad that uh, got me back involved back in, in 2004. I mean, Nick Pappas had asked me to come back and coach in 2003 and that's why I was sort of having a look at, you know, the, the fleet team in 2003 and um, I said to Dad, what do you think I should do? You know, because I, I had a, a good job at the time and the, he said, oh, look, he said, you've always loved the footy, you know. He said, you should go and do it. I said, well, I'm going to struggle because Raylan was working in the real estate and I was working long days, but we'd swap picking the kids up from school. And Dad said, well, don't worry about that. I'll go. I'll pick the kids up of an afternoon when you have to go train. So, so that was the thing that sort of um, made my mind up that I wanted to get back. I'd always had an itch for it, but there were just a few things previously that, uh, that you know, I wasn't really engaging in at the club. And that's not to say I wasn't supporting it. I just didn't engage in a few things. And um, but from then on, I've had that opportunity to come back, and and since then, oh, Josh has always been there. As he, that was one of the stipulations, I came back to coaching. That he was a ball boy because I didn't want to have all the time away from him. You know, and he used to drive Sato mad, I think. <laughs> but uh, but he loved it, and as a result, he learned a lot about the club, and he played you know at a pretty good level of football himself. And uh, daughter's always supported me. She loves the Rabbitohs as well, and obviously Raylene, she's. She she knows a lot more about football than she lets on about, but uh, she's got the you know the, the real estate now and that. But she's just never stood in my way of anything I've needed to do with football and that. So mm. I know I know there are a few, but that's family's one. The second one was Jack Gibson. Uh, Jack Gibson. Well, I got I got a chance to play at Cronulla under Jack Gibson, and that was the reason I left South at that stage. He he was the Wayne Bennett uh, of my football here as as playing as a coach and so to get to get the call from Jack and go there and uh it wasn't as successful a stint as I, I would have liked but I learned so much more that there was life to football outside of just South Sydney and how different people do things and Jack had been over studying uh over in in the states about all different and it, it was it just opened my eyes up to what you know different things could be done in rugby league you know taught me more about discipline and you know just a little thing, uh, he showed us that Vince Lombardi tape about, you know, the second effort and um, you know, I talked about being 15 minutes early for, for training and things like that. I always took that in. I'd all, I, you know, even to today, I hate being late for anything. and Just the discipline that I've had through there. But I just learned, uh, you know, from him, he just had an aura about him. Mm. And it, it was a lot of the time was what he didn't say that meant more than what he said. Because you could just feel what he meant, what he was conveying with you, you know. Um, another guy was, um, it sounds strange, but I, my school teacher at Mars Brothers Page, he, he was my coach in the under-14s and um, I was just started becoming a goal kicker and uh, his name was Jeff Pritzler. He's passed away, Jeff, unfortunately. Um, now, but um, he just gave me a process uh, and show me exactly the best way that he thought I could kick goals. And 
from a 14-year-old to my last NRL game, I had exactly the same um, process of how many steps I took, um, you know. And he, he said, look, if you follow this right and the ball doesn't go over, go and see the referee and tell him there's something wrong with the football. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, I wasn't that brash to do that. But uh, <laughs> funny thing, though, one day, he gave me these, all those things to do and I was kicking really badly. It was about 1987. I rang him up. You know, I don't want to go too long here, but rang him up to come and, and look at it anyway. He said, line up what you're doing. I went it lined up, came back, kicked the ball, and it was a shocker, you know. And he said, where's your sand? I said, well... The ball sitting on the sand. He said, no, 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 the sand. And one of the first things he always taught me was being a toe poker, with the foot you didn't kick with, you'd put that up next to the ball. He said, put sand there when you're practising to make sure you know where your foot's going. Because if your foot's not right there, you don't get over the ball and you start leaning back. Mm. And he said that truly. He was there for five minutes and I put the sand there and the, I never forgot it again. Yeah, so it was a, it's very interesting. It's a, it's, it was amazing, you know, and it, and it was um, – yeah, you know, you know, I love all sport, and you look at processing golf swings, and and you know, even even what you do with skill in, in rugby league, the process and and the re- repetition it helps you do it so well. So, mm. that was a great lesson for me. And number four, the biggest career changing person uh, in my in my life was Dave Falonga. <laughs> <laughs> Back in uh, in 2009, he, he knocked out Jason Taylor. Um, but well, to be to set that right, at halfway through that season, JT told me I was no longer required as a coach because uh, you were assistant coach then to him. I was assistant yeah. coach, yeah, yeah. And we had uh, varying differences on the philosophy of, of, of football, etc. Um, but I always got on okay with him. Don't get me wrong, but. It just, our relationship broke down. And I'd gone down and had a meeting with Wayne down at um, at St. George or Warra down there, and I was going to coach the under-20s and assist with the with the first grade as well. So I'd actually taken that job and said yes to it. So it's ironic that now Wayne comes to the club, and I nearly mm. got coaching with him a long time ago. But, um, you know, then what happened, JT you know, and Dave got, got released from the club. Mm. Langy came in as the head coach and I got the job in, in football management. And at that stage, I always wanted to be a head coach. Mm. That's what I wanted to do, particularly here at South. Mm. But in hindsight, it was a was was great to give you longevity, you know, in the game. And, and what I do now, obviously, I really enjoy it. I love the place. But, um, you know, I was a bit of a joke when I said, but Dave, but that was something that did change. Yeah. It changed my, my whole life. Now you not only get to work with Wayne, but you practically live in each other's pockets at <laughs> Oval <laughs> sharing yeah, we, an office. We, yeah, we share an office together and uh and to be fair, like if if I could have five people on that the list, uh, he'd be one of them because I what I've learnt in the last, you know, two and a half years just in that office with Wayne and mm. uh you know, another one of you know, a bit like Jack Gibson, you know, that it's not always, you know, what they say, it's what they're not saying mm. and things like that. He he's got a great aura. But he's um, he's just probably one of the people that I've seen get the most out of individuals mm. in my whole career in rugby league. Mm. Hello, Fantastic. You, you kicked off about Jack Gibson and then you finished with, with Wayne. And it's interesting, you know, because I, I know Wayne had a really close relationship with Ron Massey and so did, did Jack. Yeah. Jack had a, a close relationship with Ron Massey and they sound like three very similar guys and, and it's almost, you know, Wayne's his own man and he's got got his own strengths but he's, I hear from lots of people, he's very similar to Jack and very similar to Ron so it's almost like that Jack Gip, Jack Gibson legacy is living on now through through Wayne, that that that, that man management because, you know, I, I always talk up John Lang and I love John Lang and he's, until I met Wayne, John was the best man manager I've seen, and John's still certainly right up there. But Wayne, the way he's able to have players believe in themselves uh, is unbelievable, and uh, the way he manages guys and gets a read on guys, and as you said, gets the best out of guys is amazing. Yeah, mm. you're right. There, there was a close relationship between Jack and and Wayne and Mass, and Mass, Mass was um, Mass was Jack's right hand man there when when he was coaching us and. He what he didn't know about football it wasn't worth knowing either. But what we'd have back then, you, 
it, that, that was the first time, you know, you'd have your, your whole squad broken into different teams that compete at trading against each other. And you play the, the first grade, second grade, third grade. They obviously play on the weekend. And on Tuesday night at training, there'd be a half hour before everyone started. It was just the players play had to get up and speak and they got marked out at 10 and they were joke. It was the funniest half hour of the week. And I know, what I see now, I don't see it, I don't go into any of the videos or anything like that, but I'm often walking past when there's a preview or a review on and the boys are pissing themselves laughing in there with, with Wayne, you know, and he just takes away, you know, sure, it's a, it's a tough game and results are so paramount to everything, but he just makes, takes every, takes it all pressure off people, he just let, gets them to play for the reasons they want to. Mm. Yep. You spoke about those lessons you got and one of the ones you got that you still carry into your life and I, I see it is that, you know, you're never late and I've certainly seen that at lunch and dinner. You, you're absolutely <laughs> carried that right, right through, to, through to your whole life, LA. So it's well, good to see you got those life lessons. They'd be very proud of you. <laughs> well, as soon as I see you get up to go to lunch, I follow. So they, <laughs> and try and get in front. We need to have a sort of a moratorium on fat jokes, I reckon, just for one, just for one episode. Uh, <laughs> later. <laughs> Now, over to you, Shannon, with your top four most influential people. Um, well, I just mentioned him. Uh, number one by far for me is John Lang. Um, John Lang took me at a time in my career when it was sort of wasn't really going anywhere and I went over there and had a lot of success with him at the Sharks and really enjoyed my time with him at the Sharks and then even at Penrith. And then, obviously, we won a comp in 2003 um, even though I got chopped for that grand final side, Lingy, I, I, I still love you. Um, you still put him in number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still I still love him like a dad, actually. Yeah, do it number eight, <laughs> and you put him in number one. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably number about 28, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't want to get so close. But no, Lingy, again, like LA mentioned about Jack Gibson and, and Wayne, he taught me a lot of lessons that I've carried off the field as well as on the field and ex-hooker, always teaching me things. So Lengy's number one. Uh, and obviously, I, I've said before, I think Lengy had a bit of that legacy in that 2014 side that won the grand final too. I think he, he played a, a bit of a role in that um, moving forward. But uh, another one is the great, another great South coach here, and he was also the CEO of our junior league and was a great Rabbitohs player as well, was the great Bull Gorman. Bull Gorman coached me at Kenzo. I'm a Kenzo junior like Sutz and um, had me for a long time. And Bull, Bull was a very physically um, – he was a tough player and he was a physically robust guy, but he was an absolute gentleman to our kids, to our parents. And he taught us you could play tough on the field, but you didn't have to be a thug off the field. And I, I took that from, from Bull as well as I learnt lots of football and life lessons from Bull Gorman. Uh, sadly, he's not with us anymore, but um, – I know he shaped a lot of young men's career, particularly here through the junior league. He um, had a great spray at us when I, when I was playing second grade at CS. We played down Illawarra. It was a day, Illawarra, not so George Illawarra. And we were playing terrible. We came at half time. And he said to the gear steward, he said, uh, mate, take all the short, shorts off these blokes, put some skirts on them, will you? That's the way they're playing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That sounds like ball. Yeah, that's how he used to talk. He was he was no nonsense, um, both on and off the field, but a, a genuinely decent fella. Um, the third is uh, another one from Akenzo days. Um, a lot of people might know him, but in the junior league they did at the time. His name's Eddie Wilson. Uh, great guy, Eddie. Um, he was just so nurturing to us kids. Sort of taught us a love of the game of rugby league. It wasn't all about winning. Uh, I played with his son, Dave. He was a good footballer himself. But Eddie, um, I lived in Wollamaloo in the public housing estates. Mum and dad, dad didn't know much about footy and they, we didn't have a car or anything like that. Eddie used to drive all the way down to Wollamaloo to pick me up and another couple of kids and he had this little minivan. He'd pick us all up from all other areas, guys who wouldn't have played rugby league except for Eddie Wilson. And not only did he make rugby league possible for us, um, he, he made the love of rugby league possible and and I, I think he played a big part in my sort of outlook towards uh, footy and certainly had a lot of success under him on a number of premierships at Kenzo myself and not as many as Sato but um, maybe I'll get a mural next week but <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it alright <laughs> <laughs> very good uh, the, the last one is a, is a South legend and uh, again you know had a of a father figure my father was very 
um, influential in my life and a great father. But another guy that sort of had a big influence in my life was Jim Morgan. I've mentioned him before too. Played played for Australia, um, co- coached a, a number of sides. Um, but he lived next door to me and um, my best mate was his um, stepson, my best mate, Matthew Gifford Fats. And um, he treated me like a son. I, like there were countless times when they went away on family holidays and they'd fly up to the Gold Coast and... Jim would fly me up as well. Out of his own pocket, mum and dad didn't have much money and he was just extremely – he wasn't wealthy or anything, just extremely generous. Would f- Flew me up countless times, never expected anything in return and just uh, taught me respect uh, as much as anything. Uh, Jim was a tough, great footballer, never had a big ego. As I've said before, never swore in front of women and just taught me to be polite and probably um, self-deprecating a little bit. You know, he talked himself down, not up. A funny guy, Jim uh, – a gentleman, so yeah, Jim Morgan was definitely my top four. So I had John Lang, uh, Bull Gorman, Eddie Wilson, and, and Jim Morgan. Very good, very good list. Sut, what are your thoughts on top four most influential people? Yeah, probably my parents. I think um, you know, growing up, they've always been supportive of me, used to drive me everywhere that I needed to go for football. Um, you know, and then like, I've got a little story here. So when I got, was about 17. Um, bit of a rat bag around then, and um, my dad, my dad got me a job at Mitre Ten. So um, I started on the Monday. It was Friday when he told me. Um, bit of partying over the weekend. It's seedy on <laughs> the is Monday, me. <laughs> and um, he came home Monday after. I was like, "Oh, did you go to that? Did you go to the job?" And I went, "No." And he's never been angry at me. You know, pretty much my whole life, he's always been that supportive, and he said, "Get the f- out of the house." Or, sorry, <laughs> um, <laughs> and that was the first time I've, I felt like I let him down. So I started leaving, and my mum actually chased me up the street, saying, "You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere." And then, um, so I end up going back home after a couple of hours, and um, I felt like I really disappointed him. Mm. And um, it was probably from when, from that moment that I wanted to make something out of my footy career. Mm. And just like that, he was, again, like very supportive of mm. everything I did. I just felt like I let him down. But, you know, he always comes to the games. Um, I'm always comes to the games. Um, even now they try to get to as many games as possible. So I think they've had a you know big influence on my footy career and just my life in general. Mm. Um. Another person, probably Scruffy Tovio. Um, he was one of my one of my coaches at Kensington. Um, champion fella, very funny. Um, back then, back then, um, I think he used to like a bit of a party. And um, <laughs> not used to, not used yeah, to. Yeah, not well, yet. <laughs> so probably a few grand final days, he'd rock up, um, no shirt on. Uh, <laughs> someone's had to drag him out of the pub or something <laughs> to get him there and he'll just probably one, Eleanor Sutton <laughs> <laughs> um, actually one of the games he was late and he had got Damo on the phone to name the team <laughs> that was actually going to run out <laughs> but um, no he was a great coach um, he you know he knew how to get the team going and always had a laugh at the same time and he used to walk up and down the sideline Grand final day, just screaming stuff out, yeah, stuff that we need to do. So, no, he was he was like one of you know my favourite coaches growing up. Um, probably Madge. I'll give Madge a mention because he pushed me. Um, you know, I never really wanted to be captain or anything like that, and he gave me. He said, "We need you to be captain, and you know, the, the boys look up to you." and um, at st- at the at first, I did wasn't really keen on doing it, but um, I'm glad he gave me the opportunity too because I ended up enjoying it, enjoying it, loving it, and I'm um, obviously captain the, the grand final team. So, um, you know, I was very happy that he pushed me along there and you know, made me captain, and you know, he got more out of me. Very good. Very I was just going to say, Saturday, telling that story about you know 
yeah, setting up the job and you know turning up on your on your first day on the Monday and it reminds me of that episode of The Simpsons when he's Homer Simpsons at the uh, barbecue, the, the the workplace barbecue, and he has an argument with Mr Burns, the boss, and Mr Burns says, "Don't even bother coming in on Monday," and he goes, "Woohoo, three day weekend!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a great episode. <laughs> good good story about Sutton. His his captaincy. Obviously, the captain has to speak up on stage after you get the trophy in the. In the grand final in 2014, it was the week leading up to the game, and I remember talking to Sutton. I said, "You got your speech down, Pat? Yet for what you're going to say?" Then he's going, "Ah, no, nah, I'll just say what I feel when I get up there." I said, "I'll oh, just make sure you thank all the right people. Mention the members. Mention the fans here today. I said, mention the sponsors, and I started rattling them all off. He's gone, "Jez, I'm no chance." <laughs> I said, "Mate, just look down your gear. I said, start at the middle, go to the sleeves, down to the shorts. You'll be right." <laughs> And he, he nailed it. He nailed it up there. I was very nervous. He did it very nervous. He said, up. <laughs> I'd like to thank Bon's undies. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I notice you've got the the tattoo. Is it on your on your wrist of uh, of the Let's do this? Yes, yeah. so I got yeah. it on my wrist in yeah. um, Bali one year and. Got a couple of rabbits on me. Yeah. Oh, what about what about the tattoo on oh. the forehead? It wasn't that great. That was a good G-up. Oh, no, it wasn't it was a G-up. G-up. <laughs> yeah, that is all. Don't worry about that. Yeah, well, I think it even popped up on the news that hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I started getting calls from journos going, have John Sutton and Adam Reynolds had rabbits tattooed on, the, on their head? And I looked on Instagram and I saw it and I rang the journo back and I said, well, I don't know if it's real or not, but it makes it hard for him to play for anyone else. <laughs> yeah, so they everyone. Just have their contract <laughs> period. <laughs> They're not going anywhere. Con- contract for life. Done. Yeah. A few of the boys were getting tats and stuff, and someone was getting the little one. And Ren- Reno grabbed the stencil and goes, "Couldn't do it up there." And I was saying, "I was like, oh, that's cool." So we got it. We both got the stencil on, and it's, we go, "Let's put it up Instagram." But it has to be in black and white because they wouldn't. They would yeah. say it's not yeah. real. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, and it just. My mum rang me too, saying you didn't get a tat on your puppy eyebrow. I was like, no, nah, it's just a stencil, mum. <laughs> I, I've got I've got a tattoo somewhere, but I can't mention where. And it says Lou Boy, but um, when I get really really excited. It says I am a Wallamaloo boy. <laughs> oh, no. Is that oh. on your gut? Is it? <laughs> when I breathe out, <laughs> it saves the moment. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly run through my one. So my first one's David Tapp, former CEO here, and he was the first one to give me a. A shot as the the media manager at at the Rabbitohs back in two thousand and three, and this is my twentieth season now. And and Tappy's provided plenty of uh, plenty of laughs over the years. We all love the David Tapp impersonation. It's fantastic <laughs> to uh, have Tappy on board here. It'd be remiss of us if we didn't mention him in uh, in my top four influential people. I'd say hello to his pet goat. Is it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his pet goat? That's a great story. I love it. Not one to be told on here though. <laughs> Um, the, the second person on my list is, is Richo, Shane Richardson. Um, so when uh, Richo first joined the club, he had an opportunity to clean out the staff if he wanted to. And he, he backed me and, and gave me a, a chance to continue on with, with the role. And we worked together for 15 years. And he, he also backed me with my grand announcing, which has opened up plenty of doors for me over the years in other sports. Um such, such as cricket and also hurling. Hurling was one of my highlights of the sports that I that I ground announced. Down so, so, Sato was hurling at Kenzo Oval. He was I didn't commentate that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 15 years work, working with Richo, so he was um, clearly very influential to me. The next group I've got is um, Blake Solly, the great Mark Ellis, and, and Brock Schaefer now because – now that Richo's moved on, I felt like they've helped me take the next step in my career because I always felt like Richo was a safety net for me that I could think a certain way, but I'd always go to Richo and ask, it, is this okay if we do it this way? And he was always the safety net, whereas I feel under Blake and Ello and, and Brock, I've got more scope now to, to do the job on myself rather than have that, that safety net and, and make decisions and help guide the club both in footy and off the field in ad, in admin as well. So I yep. thank Ello and, and Blake and Brock for, for putting that trust in me to, to get that job done. And the final one for me is my family. I think we've all mentioned our, our families, but they indoctrinated me as a Rabbitohs fan when when I was a young bloke and that stuck with me for life now. And we're trying to do the same thing with my daughter now. She, um, she's she been walking around the, the house this week 
telling us all how much she hates the roosters and <laughs> can't wait to see um to <laughs> she still gets a bit confused can't can't wait to see Greg Sam and Sutto <laughs> win this weekend but <laughs> oh, <laughs> not playing any more sweetheart but look for the blue shirt <laughs> you'll see Sutto out there but um and 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 my partner Christy she's very supportive with the amount of time that it that work takes up and she's hasn't been into sport at all, but she started to learn more about the Rabbitohs as well. And it's still a competition between whether it's her or five-year-old Kira that know more about rugby league at, at the cool. moment. I think I think Jeez. Kira might be just in front. <laughs> I think you'll be cool. You did it. Like <laughs> Speaking of our great partners at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so they they are my uh, they're my four, but it's great to hear about all the influential people in everyone's lives and everyone's careers. You never do it on your own. It's all you're always influenced by the people and part of a team, and that's what's so great about either playing rugby league or working in rugby league that you are part of a team. So it's great to hear about that, and we'll be back in just a second. Now, the Rabbitohs are back with home games for season 2021, and that means that you can grab your corporate hospitality and game day experiences from the Rabbitohs now. And with our games being played at Stadium Australia this year, um, there are no restrictions on the size of the groups that you can entertain in the in the corporate hospitality areas. So it doesn't matter whether it's a group of business clients that you're looking to impress or a group of mates looking for a fun night out at the footy. James, Maddie, and the corporate hospitality team at, at the Rabbitohs have the options that can suit your needs. And there's also VIP experiences on game day. So you can get up close to the players as they prepare to to go into battle out there, especially this week against the Roosters. And they're a lot of fun too, being able to head out to the sideline or or watch from the um, the room next to the warm-up room down in the, in the bowels of Stadium Australia, down near our change room. So to check out what's on offer from the Rabbitohs corporate hospitality team, visit corporate.rabbitohs.com.au and there's options for everyone, isn't there, Shannon? Yeah, there absolutely is. And it's, you know, some of those money can't buy experiences, they're great for staff rewards or incentives. They're great for u- use with um, some of your customers. You might want to, I know a lot of our sponsors use them in competitions to go in the draw to win whatever it is, be on be on the field pre-game, those kind of things, and they're a great day out. And just before we, we, we finish this promo, you don't have any sponsors you want to give a, a plug to, Sato? <laughs> you or, any boxes you want to sell out yeah, the stadium, <laughs> Sato? They just cheat up supply. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> Very good. Just remember, it is corporate.rabbitos.com.au <laughs> for any of your Rabbitos corporate hospitality needs. Now it's time for our trivia question from last week. These guys have been terrible at doing their homework and Shannon's reaction as we went to this <laughs> segment says he hasn't done it again this week. So the question from last week, the South Sydney Dream Team was announced in 2004. Who was named captain and who was named coach of that team? We might start with Elo, just looking at the confused look on Shannon's face. <laughs> Am I allowed to give the answers? Jess, we did you, speak off here about yes, this before we yes, came on. Yes, we did, and you got it right. I can't remember. Let's see if you can <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the um, the coach was the great Jack Rayner. Uh, won was four or five premierships yeah, as a coach. Five premierships yeah, with yeah. the Rabbitohs. And, um, Ryan Fletcher. Ryan Fletcher. <laughs> 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 he was captain coach, wasn't he? <laughs> Fletch would be lucky to make ball boy in that team. Uh, and um, the the captain was uh, the great John Sattler. The great John Sattler. The great John Sattler. I was, I was telling Elo before it was it was interesting when we assembled all the the esteemed people that were voting on on that dream team back in two thousand and four. We hadn't planned on on naming a captain and. As uh, we we named Jack Rayner as the coach, he wasn't named in the team, and they said he's he was the greatest captain coach of this club of all time. And I said, well, maybe we should name a captain. I said, do we name Jack? And they they all said, oh no. And then I said, well, the only person that was the unanimous vote for their position was Clive Churchill. So I said, makes sense that it's Clive. And they all said, no, no, and. I said, okay, so I shut the door and we sat down again. I said, well, who should it be? And they all just went around the table and every one of them said John Sattler. 
Yeah, right. Just the, the leadership skills that he must have had to lead that group of men and the heroics that he showed, obviously, earning a lot of credibility amongst the squad, but I'm sure he had it well before the 1970 grand final. But he was a unanimous selection as, as captain. And, and Rupert John Rayner, Jack Rayner, what a, what a gentleman. One of the great gentlemen of the game that I've met here at the Rabbitohs, unfortunately not, not with us anymore. But uh, he and his wife Lola, lovely people, absolutely lovely people and represented the Rabbitohs with class every, every time you met them and spoke to them. Yep. Some of the absolute greats, it's it's great when you when you get to meet them off the field, when they live up to, you know, you love them and you adore them on the field and uh, then you meet them off the field and they're, you know, they're everything you hope they would be. They're lovely and is a bit of an exception, but you know those. <laughs> 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 what I mean, he's lovely off the field. Yeah. Just... <laughs> they, they were the dream team in two thousand four. We're, we're going to do our nightmare team uh, soon enough. I reckon Fletch might get a run in that, but uh, I'm going to shout his captain. <laughs> So let's look ahead to our trivia question, which we'll have the answer for next week, and it involves uh, Sutto. Benji Marshall, who, you, who we've mentioned a few times on the podcast over, over uh, recent weeks, he's played over 300 NRL games in his career, but who has played more first-grade games between Benji and Sut? Now, the hint here is Benji made his debut in 2003, and he's still playing, whereas Sutto made his debut in 2004 and retired at the end of 2019. So that might give you a bit of a, a hint, but Sutto, as we said before, he's played 336 first grade games in his career. Has the great Benji Marshall, the man they're touting as the first New Zealander to become an immortal, has he played more or less first grade games to this point than the great John Sutton? So we will answer that next week and do your homework, gents. It's well, your no, do your homework, oh, Shannon. Shannon. Oh, Hello, got it right. <laughs> he got him before me. I was going to say Jack Rayner and John Sattler, actually. I, I stole my thunder again, Alan. <laughs> Very good. Take your computer to lunch with you and have a look at <laughs> Google or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> the butter's on the fingers, eh? <laughs> uh, very good. We'll be back in a second. Now, if you're looking for your next epic holiday or maybe a long weekend with your mates or you really need to get to our next travel game, then it's time to What If It. What If has great deals on accommodation, flights, car hire and more. Plus, because they're the official travel partner of the South Sydney Rabbitohs, you can head to whatif.com slash Rabbitohs and use the promo code Rabbitohs15 to save 15% on select hotels. Now, conditions apply for that, but make sure you head to whatif.com slash Rabbitohs and use that promo code code Rabbitohs15 to save that 15% on select hotels. What if it's Aussie for travel? And as we've pointed out a few times, what if are the major partners of our Pathways teams of which, Sut, you're involved with the SG Ball squad and what a season they've had so far. Six games, six undefeated results. Yeah, I think it's five and a draw. Mm. So, um, no, they're going really good. Um, really strong team. Um, big Dave Mawali, who's been training with first grade, he's... He's going really well. He's a big boy, just turned 18. So I think we'll be seeing him first grade in the near f- future. So I'm um, yeah, ex- excited for the end of the season. We've got three games to go and then semis. So um, anything less than grand final wins, not good enough. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, well, there we go. <laughs> well, what if, what if um, with the original sponsors of our uh, under 20 or under 21 side, that was our uh, jersey. Jersey flag as it was back mm. then a couple of years ago when we won the comp. So hopefully it can be a good omen with them being the major sponsor of the SG Ball side. Mm. And uh, hopefully we get Finch down into the dressing room to celebrate another grand final win. Yeah, you mentioned Davey there, Sutter. It was a nice moment actually in the sheds uh, this week at, at training. He turned 18. It was his 18th birthday. And I was down in the, the physio room chatting to a couple of boys and I hear this singing coming from the from the change rooms and it was it was the squad singing happy birthday to Davey and his mum and dad had turned up with a cake and everyone's like don't tell Alice the nutritionist don't tell her don't tell her there's a cake in here but they, I heard they were saying don't tell Ella <laughs> <laughs> they didn't <laughs> <laughs> but Davey stood there and, and you could just see the look on his face. It meant so much to him to have his mum and dad down there in the sheds and with the cake and wishing him a happy birthday and having all the boys sing happy birthday to him. It was a really nice moment and a great thing for the young bloke. Oh, fantastic. 
Yeah, it was very good. So, uh, yes, as we said, what if it's Aussie for travel? Make sure you go to whatif.com slash Rabbitohs and use Rabbitohs15 uh, for the promo code to save 15% on select hotels. The absolute highlight of the podcast is coming up. After his effort a couple of weeks ago with the Billy Bloggs joke, it is time for Ello's Joke of the Week. Thanks, Jez. Um, I'm just trying to think of one. I haven't put a lot of in there. <laughs> Make one up. Uh, there, there, was this, there was this young guy that had a speech impediment. He was having trouble finding a job. Uh, and he used to stutter all the time. And anyway, he's uh, he'd gone for about four different jobs this day and uh, had no luck at all. And he's, you know, he's had a look online and there's his job as a door-to-door Bible salesman, right? And uh, I thought, oh, I better give that a go. He said, yeah, I haven't had any luck anywhere else. So he turns up, says the guy, uh, excuse me, m- 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 mister, he said, uh, am I any ch- 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 chance of uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're working for you? He said, oh, mate, he said, it might be a bit difficult, you know, just with your impediment, mate. He said, I'm not being rude, but, you know, you've got to present to people, you know, when you're selling the Bible and that. It's pretty hard to say. We've had six people turn up this week, and it's Wednesday since Monday. I gave them a chance to do it, and they've come back, and six people have resigned. So I think it's going to be pretty hard for, for you to, to do it. So I said, no, 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 g- give me a chance, mate. Please, please. So I said, all right, mate. This is the deal. There's 20 Bibles in, in a box, all right? They sell for $50 each. Okay, you get $10 for every Bible you sell. He said, this, this, this sounds good, mate. That's f- 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 fantastic. So <laughs> anyway, how do you go with these box of Bibles, right? Anyway, an hour and a half later, he walks back in with an empty box. He's got $1,000 in cash. He gives a bike 800 and puts 200 in his pocket and he said, and the owner goes, my God, how good is this? He said, mate, he said, uh, there's another couple of hours ago this afternoon. You want a couple? He said, yeah, give me two more boxes. No, sorry. He said, give me two more boxes, please. And he comes back and he comes back about six o'clock. It's about half hour after the place closed. But the bloke's staying back to see him when he comes back. He comes back with two more empty boxes, $2,000. Gives him sixteen hundred, puts four hundred in his kick. He's made six hundred dollars for the day, and the bloke's telling me how good at what he does, you know. So, but mate, that's fantastic. I've earned this much money, and you know, you know, selling Bibles is really hard to do door to door. He said, uh, "You've made a fortune for yourself and me today." He said, "Can you just tell me what you do?" He said, "Well, I n- 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 knock on the door, and." When the person answers, I say, would you like to b- 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 buy a b- 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 Bible or would you pr- pr- prefer me to read it to you? <laughs> That's very good. I was worried where it was heading, but he tied it up in a bow at the end. And the mail will form all the people with speech impediments. I can hear them typing their emails as we speak. And Ello's a good Catholic boy. We know that, so we don't need to hear from any, any religious people. But that was fantastic, Ello. Shannon. You're back on again next week. Bring it on, Jez. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We've had premiership predictions. We've got bring it on with the joke of the week. Well, we're very confident here this afternoon. Anyway, we'll be back in a second. Well, thank you very much for listening, ladies and gentlemen. You can contact us with topic suggestions by filling out the form at rabbitos.com.au slash podcasts. Or you can contact us on Twitter using at SSFC Rabbitos and using that hashtag top for podcast. Don't forget to write us, write us a glowing review like my mum did earlier on that we, we spoke about. Give us a five-star rating and please hit that subscribe or follow button to automatically add the podcast to your feed every week. And don't forget to tune in to our other podcasts on the Rabbitohs Podcast Network. We've got our regular media conferences that we have leading up to games. That includes Wayne's press conferences, which are always a laugh for everyone that 
that listens. We've got the Rabbitohs Insider podcast, and the one that we want you to listen to is the Rabbitohs Radio podcast with Chaps, Mavo, and Brownie. What an episode they put out last week. <laughs> I think it's the best one they've ever done. Was that the one you were on? That was the chance? one I was oh, on, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but they're doing a fantastic job, those yeah. boys, and they talk a lot more footy than us. And we, the way we look at it, I was talking about it with the boys, is when we've got games at ANZ Stadium where a lot of our fans come from from this area over in the South Sydney area, you can listen to their podcast on the way out where they talk about the upcoming game, watch us beat the Roosters, and then when you're sitting in P1 car park or driving home after the game, you can listen to the top four podcasts. So we'll entertain you all the way home and they'll entertain you all the way out there. So they're doing a great job, the Rabbitohs radio podcast, boys, so make sure you listen to those ones. We'll be back next week with more from the top four podcast. It's powered by Audio Technica and proudly presented by What If. Ello, as usual, thank you for your time. That was great, Jez. I really enjoyed it. And uh, Sato coming in made it uh, eventful. It did. To say the least. It did. Yes. I apologise, Sato, for all those heckles today. You, you, you were excellent, actually. You and your 12 sponsors. <laughs> we might have to get him involved in our sponsorship, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shannon, thank you for your time, as as always. You're most welcome, Jez. Very good. And, Sut, thanks for making the time today to come in. We really enjoyed it, and I'm sure all of our listeners will enjoy hearing from you and I hope you enjoyed your uh, your intro music as well. It took me ages to get that on the roadcaster. So <laughs> with the trumpets and that. That's, I was in my office, everyone was telling me to shut up playing my trumpets and my trombones and I said, I've got to record this. That's what they play when LA walks in the South Coogee Bowling Club. <laughs> He's here at <laughs> It used to be an alarm. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much everyone for listening. We're powered by Audio Technica and presented by What If, and we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Rabbitohs Top 4 Podcast, powered by Audio Technica and proudly presented by What If, official travel and pathways partner of the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Support the club and visit whatif.com forward slash Rabbitohs to book your next trip. Don't forget to use the code RABBITOS15 to get 15% off select hotels. Conditions apply. What if? It's Aussie for travel. Please leave us a five-star rating and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Up the RABBITOS.